Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a rectangular wing just like this one using MATLAB. The version of MATLAB that I'm using is 2020 revision B. So first, in order to obtain the, the airfoil profile, we're going to go to a website called Air, Airfoil Tools. This one. And here you can choose any airfoil that you want, any, any, any one of them is going to work but I want to choose one, specifically this one, right here. So you go to Airfoil Details, and here you have the list of points that are going to be used to sketch the profile of the airfoil, but you're going to come here. You're going to open a new notepad file and going to copy all these numbers. And you save it. Okay, so once you have saved it, you have to make sure that it is saved in the same directory as uh, your working directory in MATLAB. So this should be shown here. You should see the text file with the, with the coordinates for the airfoil, and we can start writing the code. Okay, so in order to define the, the wing, we need three things. First, we need the profile of the airfoil, which we already have. We have it stored here in the text file. Then we need the chord length. So we're going to create a new variable called C and we're going to give it a, a run uh, any value for now. The next variable is going to be the span of the wing, which is the, the distance from the root or the fuselage to the tip of the wing. We're going to call it S, and we're going to give it a value 5. And lastly, we're going to define the number of cross-sections we want, because we're going to define the cross-section at the root and at the tip of the wing, and in between those two cross-sections, we're going to have more cross-sections. And we're going to define how many, including the, the two at extremes. So for now, we're going to say 10. Okay, now that we have our three variables defined, we're going to import the data from the text file and we're going to plot it to see that if everything is correct. We're going to import the coordinates for the airfoil to a variable called profile. You can name it whatever you want. We're going to use in a function called read uh, matrix. Here for the argument, we're going to uh, type the name of the of the file in quotation marks so you can see that it's already specified for me you have to add the extension at the end so if you run this you're going to get a matrix that is 33 uh, rows by two columns this means that we have 33 points in the airfoil profile uh, for x and y so perfect and we are going to plot this okay so we can assign each column is going to be x and y right so we can assign so the first column is going to be x which is going to be profile it's going to be the first the first uh, column all the rows and then y is going to be the same but in this case the second column so we can plot this to check the shape of the of the plot Okay, so it is looking good. It has a, a chord of 1, that is the default. But if you zoom in here at the tail, uh, you can see that it's not a closed loop. So for this, uh, to create, in order to create a 3D geometry, you need to have a closed loop. So what we're going to do is that, so since we start plotting from here, this is our first point and this is our last point, what we're going to do is we're going to add one more point to the x and y uh, vectors that is going to be equal to our first point. That way we ensure that we are always close in the loop. So before assigning each column to x and y, we're going to say that variable profile is equal to profile and profile is going to be the first row, both columns. And now we can run this. Now, if we zoom in at the tail, we see that it is closed. Okay, so now we can move forward. Next, uh, here we have a chord of one, which is exactly what we have here, Here, but that is the default. What happens if we want a chord of three? Let's see what happens. So nothing changes. In order for this to change, what we have to do is to multiply both C and X times the chord. That is going to scale the, the, the airfoil up or down, depending on the value of, of the chord. So if we do this, now you can see that the, that the shape doesn't change relative to itself, but the chord changes. Now you see that it's a chord of 3, which is what we have here. If, if we select a smaller chord, let's say 0.1, you can see 0.1, but the, but the relative shape, shape do, doesn't change. So that's good. Let's keep it at 1. Next, we are going to create a vector that contains the values for uh, the position along the length axis of, of the wing. 
this is going to be called the vector z and, and all the all the all the cross sections are going to be equal to space so we can use the lean space function that is going to go from zero to the wingspan which is s and it's going to contain uh, an equal number to the number of cross sections okay now one of the properties from a rectangular wing is that the cross section doesn't change along its uh, length therefore what we all we have to do is just copy and paste the first airfoil that we created right here for every distance that we have for every element that we have in this vector that is going to create a chain of airfoils and then we can just connect them within each other and create the 3d shape so what we're going to do is going to repeat the x and y matrices we're going to repeat it by the number of cross sections that we specify so we're going to create an array that has 10 rows which is equal to the number of cross sections in whatever columns uh, we have exported in our in, in here in our file we're going to be using the repmat function we're going to repeat uh, the vector x we're going to repeat it for n cs number of rows and just one times the column we're going to do the exact same thing for y now the C uh, uh, array is uh, similar, but it's a little bit different. Here, if we take a look here, you can see that since every row is going to represent one cross section, and all the points in the cross in that same cross section are going to be the same distance away from the origin, that means that all the points, for example, in the first cross section are going to be a distance zero away from the from the origin. The second cross section, all the points are going to be a distance 0 0.5, etc., away from the origin. So what we are going to do is going to transpose this vector to make it a column vector, and then multiply this col this uh, column vector by the number of points that that uh, we have uh, in our file. So we are going to use again repmat c transposed. We are going to create one. Uh, repetition of the of the rows because we don't want any repetition and then i'm going to create a new variable called end nodes and where i'm going to obtain these end nodes is going to be from here i'm going to create a new line a new variable in nodes which is going to represent the number of nodes per cross section and we can do that by using the function size which is going to tell us the size of the array of the profile array so if we run this you can see that n nodes is equal to 34. And why 34? Because profile has 34 rows. Okay, so once we run this, okay, so once we run this, we should get three vectors that are, uh, well, it actually should be 33, but 10 by 33, what happened? Oh, here I forgot to transpose this, have to be transposed as well. And if we run this, okay, 10. 10 by 34, y is 10 by 34, and c is 10 by 34, and we can just right away plot this. Okay, so you can see the, well, it doesn't really look like anything right now. You have to add, format the axis in x for y. Basically, here is the wing. All we are missing is to add the covers at both ends. And we're going to do the same way that we did for the cone and the cylinder. We're going to create one point in the at the center of the chord here. And we are going to connect it to the points uh, on the first cross section and the same thing for the last cross section. So we're going to we're going to be created creating two new points and we're going to add them at the beginning and at the end of each of these three matrices. So I am going to do this. I am going to create a uh, so I want this point to be located in the uh, halfway the chord. So in this case, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of the chord, and I'm going to multiply it by a vector of ones. That is going to be one by n nodes, and underneath it, I'm going to put my array x. Then I am going to do the exact same thing for the other point. So y is going to be different in this case. y is uh, the value for both of the points is going to be equal to zero because the chord lies on the x-axis. So we're going to multiply by a vector of zeros. One, 
in nodes. Underneath we're going to put Y and underneath that we're going to put this again. And then Z is going to be this. Then we're going to put uh, C underneath that and underneath that we're going to uh, multiply the wingspan times a uh, vector of ones, which is going to be one in nodes. Okay, running this should give us a complete uh, wing. Yeah, now you can see that we have created one point here that connects to all of the points. If you take this to any CAD program, it is going just to cons it's going to right away consider it as a flat plate, and you're not going to see all these lines. Yeah, same thing on both sides. In order to export this as an object, as a 3D object, uh, I'm going to be using a function that you can download in MathWorks that is called surf 2 stl You just save it on your working directory. By this time, hopefully, I'll re I already have a video tutorial on how to write an STL file based on this. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be using that uh, function. So you call the function surf 2 stl open parenthesis, the first argument is going to be the, the name, so I'm just going to copy this same name inside quotation marks and change the extension to STL and then the next arguments are going to be this C, X and Y and run it so here you go, you can see that it is uh, finally created well I hope that this video was helpful to you, this should work for all the airfoils only thing you have to make sure is that the rear is uh, closed. Some of these airfoils don't have the profile closed and that's why I specifically chose this one because I know that this one doesn't have it. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave it underneath uh, in the comments of this video. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Bye.